Welcome back. Uh, here's our second part of enzyme structure and function. This time we're going to be concentrating in particular on enzyme function or the mechanism of enzyme action. So um, enzymes are catalysts and some of this it helps to remember um, reaction rates and kinetic theory. The idea that um, if molecules meet with sufficient energy then they'll be able to react. Um, enzymes do something called lowering the activation energy. So in other words, they make it easier for a reaction to happen. If enzymes were present, um, you'd have to heat it up uh, to a much higher temperature. Um, enzymes allow these reactions to happen without that high temperature. Um, remembering that enzymes don't work particularly well at high temperatures, so it's a good job the enzymes, uh, you know, the, the temperatures required for them to make the reactions occur without the enzyme will be such, such that it would damage proteins and lipids in the cells. So therefore, using enzymes lowers the activation energy. Let's look at that in a bit more detail. Um, it can speed, the enzymes speed up reactions millions of times. Yeah? Um, so let's think about the, uh, what we call a standard reaction curve. Um, if we've got reactants versus products, um, and the activation energy without the enzyme is quite high, it's quite a steep hill, you've got to supply a, quite a large amount of energy to start breaking the bonds before you can actually start making the bonds. Um, if you've got an enzyme, um, it, does, uh, it lowers the activation energy required so that it makes it much easier for the um, reaction to occur. Uh, we can say that there's a transition state that's been created, it holds it more stably uh, and therefore less energy is actually required in this overall uh, process. So it, by lowering the activation energy, it makes it easier for the reaction to take place. Uh, now, we can, uh, there are two models of enzyme actions. You should have met lock and key model uh, back at GCSE. Uh, but just as a reminder, you've got um, the enzyme has a certain shape active site and then the substrate fits exactly into that active site, just like a lock and a key. So the enzyme is the lock, the substrate is the key that's going to fit into it, uh, provided that they're a perfect match, so the two fit together, they form what we call an enzyme substrate complex, two things are held together sufficiently so that they can uh, the reaction can be catalyzed and either a substrate can be broken into two products or the reverse could be occur. Two substances are held together until a new product can be formed. It could be uh, yeah, breaking or making substances. But it holds them together and makes forms an enzyme substrate complex. You should have learned about lock and key model at GCSE. Uh, let's look at that just to uh, be really clear. Um, the active site is, remember, a small part of the overall uh, enzyme structure. It's just a, uh, a six to ten amino acid sequence, whereas the most of it, it the enzyme is providing the three-dimensional shape. Um, it, can, however, it needs to be specific. Only the right-shaped enzyme and, and substrate fit together. So if the right-shaped substrate comes along, and I suspect it's going to come along any moment now, here it is, it forms, uh, forms an enzyme substrate complex, binds them together so that it allows the reaction to take place more easily and new products are made uh, until they are freed up. And remember, the enzyme doesn't get used up, it's then free to take place in the reaction again. Second model is our induced fit model. Uh, the idea being that enzymes are not a fixed and immobile and rigid substance, but actually they can flex or move a little bit. And in, whilst they often fit together quite well, um, it's the, as the enzyme binds to the substrate, it induces or causes an overall change, um, and which will favor the actual reaction from taking place. So in other words, as they join, it actually helps to perhaps break the bond or make the bond. Now, another analogy that's used for induced fit is getting to think about hand, uh, hands and gloves. Glove is kind of hand shaped. Uh, if you slide uh, your hand inside the glove, the glove takes on a precise hand shape. In other words, you've induced a uh, fit uh, by one, putting one, the two things together. Yeah, both fit well. Uh, are both are hand sufficiently hand shaped. Yeah, by putting one thing inside the other. So the uh, binding the two things together 
actually causes the change, helps them to separate, and then again frees it up for further reaction. Uh, let's uh, whistle the animation for this one as well. So the substrate doesn't necessarily need to be an exact exact fit, it needs to be a fairly close fit. Um, as they move together, it distorts the enzyme slightly, so it tightens it a little. That's exactly what we're saying. It forms the hand in glove sort of idea. It still forms an enzyme substrate complex. Um, and that lowers the activation energy, which allows the reaction to occur. Uh, and then once the, the substances separate, it re reforms to back to its original shape. So this idea of enzyme substrate complex formation, uh, the actual exact fit, or whether it's an exact fit or an induced fit, but certainly a fit between the um, active site and the substrate, that's sort of the um, fundamental principle there. Um, okay, I'm going to drop a reference at the bottom of uh, this um, video to another video to watch. Uh, this is not one of mine, Mr. W's Enzyme Song. Uh, it's an earworm that I suspect will be with you for some time if you listen to it. Um, and please enjoy it. Uh, I'm going to leave you with some true or false questions for you to consider about enzymes. So there's five for you to have a go at answering, uh, and we'll pick up with the uh, correct answers to this at the start of the next presentation where we think about factors that affect enzymes. Okay, uh, happy guessing true or false. Remember, 50-50 chance, always guess. You may never know, you might be right.